Okay, heck. Um, you know what? I thought about it, and uh, this little subfolder here, game, where we just uh, copy the code and then cut out the parts that have to do with the editor. Just delete that whole folder. We're not done with the editor. Um, I forgot to put in everything like spawn points um, for you know the guy, the enemies. Even though we don't have the enemies and stuff in the game necessarily, we're going to need spawn points and they have to be saved in the map. So rather than change it in the editor and then come back and change it in the game also, just delete the game part. We'll come back to it. Um, let's see. I, I noticed that at least one or two people um, have already started following along on the platform uh, this particular tutorial. So I thought in case you want the sprite sheets, I have renamed them and put them as these four files. So if you download these, you'll be using the same sprite sheets that I'm using. If I end up changing them later on in the, in the tutorials, I'll change them in these links. So if you download any of these uh, sprite sheets and they don't seem to match what I'm currently doing in the video that you're watching, it's because later on I change them and uh, I update them. So hopefully it won't mess anything up. But here they are. Uh, I did change a little bit. I added on some things to the bottom. I added a few more options for the ground just so that I can have like uh, different shaped platforms. Then I have um, for either side of like a lava pit, I've got the lava itself and I've got spikes. So we can add that stuff in. And uh, I put that into here. Now I need to put this into I'm going to cut and paste this into the actual program. Okay, it's pasted. And I need to add an additional option here. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll just, I've got a little bit of room. move stuff around. Copy and paste. Let's just call it death pit. I don't know. Doesn't matter. The lava and spikes are going to function exactly the same way. Um, let's see, where do we have this? Okay, the code for actually selecting a tile. We need to change this now because there's not only three tile types. We now have the additional one, so if option 4 is true, then it will be a 3. We need to go up here and figure out what 3 is. Death Pit. And then we should go to our Draw Minimap. And we're going to have to put in this new type so that it can draw a new color. And you know what? I think the new color should, the new one should be red, the, the Death Pit. So let's change and say VB Blue will represent ladders. So now when I run this, we should have load the map. Blue is the, the ladders are blue. And then let me uh, add some death pit stuff. Even though it's kind of pointless to even have it down here, I'm going to put it down here. Uh, I got to change a few things. Land. Um, let's see here. No, sky. Because I didn't originally plan for this, it's uh, a little bit messed up. It sort of works. Let's do this. Okay, it's a little ugly, but you get the idea. Oh, I should have used this one. There, that would have worked. Sky. There, it's kind of back to what it used to be. There. Looks good. And on our minimap, we can see red for the pool. Save this. All right, now we've got to come up with something for spawn points. Um, 
first I thought of making new tiles, some kind of tile picture that would represent, um, you know, the spawn point for the hero and then for the different enemies. But you know, the problem with that is it's going. We're going to have to have code in there that goes and changes the tile A and tile B back to something whenever the game actually runs, and that limits us because if we decide that wherever they appear is going to look like, you know, this spot of grass then from that point on, wherever you put a spawn point, you know that when the map actually loads and the guy is playing the game, you're going to see this tile where a spawn point was. You might not want that. I mean, we could assume that you're always going to want it to look like this, but I'd rather not do that. So we're going to spontaneously generate it using lines the same way we generated the work down here with just lines and squares. So let's see. Let's put in some new variables. So we gotta have, um, you know, let's just use A and B like we did with the Pac-Man video. Um, I'm not gonna put in all the variables that, you know, there's gonna be have to be stuff like jump variables and momentum and everything else. But I'm not gonna put any of that stuff in right now. We're just gonna do spawn points. So let's say uh, dim enemies E A. I think we used GA and GB for ghosts. Um, we're going to use EA and EB for enemies. So it's slight, dif slight differences from the uh, the last game, from Pac-Man. I'm just going to say 500. Let's say there's a maximum of 500 enemies. We can always change this. Um, okay. So we need new options here. Uh, and you know what? Instead of putting the buttons at the bottom, I'm going to slide the sprite sheet down. Because wherever I, however many buttons and stuff I put here at the top, it's very easy for me to, if I need a new button, to just slide this down a little bit more. But if I add new tiles and this thing gets taller, then I'm going to have to keep sliding the buttons down every time I add more tiles. And that could just get annoying. So um, let's just do this. I'm going to call this, I'll put a caption on here, hero spawn, copy it, and enemy spawn. And you know what, eventually we're going to have different kinds of enemies, or you could have different kinds of enemies, so you'd have to have different buttons or a list, or however you decide to do it, it's not that big of a deal. So we say, if we click on this button, then we're assuming that you've clicked on a spot, some tile, so we're going to say that A equals selected A, and B equals selected B. Um, call draw tile AB. And let's copy this. We're going to do the same kind of thing with the enemies. But we're going to have to say that enemies equals enemies plus one, and we're going to say E, A, enemies. Close this. Okay, now, we won't be able to, right now with this code, you're not going to be able to delete a spawn point. If you accidentally create one and it's not where you wanted it, right now there's no way to get rid of it. So uh, keep that in mind. We're, we'll have to add that feature later if I think about it. Um, you know, if we ran it right now and we placed a spawn point, we've placed it, but nobody can see it. It doesn't show up anywhere. So let's add that to our draw tile. We say if um, Z equals A and W equals B. So if the tile that it's drawing happens to match our A and B, that means it's our hero spawn point, then we're going to do something. And I can hear the video alarm beeping, so let me save the video.